it's time for Blumpkin and Friends, starring your host, the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. Hey kids, I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin, and with me here today is my friend, Bergy. Bergy is back. He has done an episode of the podcast, and now he's doing an episode of the show. So, welcome to Blumpkin and Friends. Hello. <laughs> kind of froze for a second there. So, we didn't... Buddy, shut the fuck up! God damn it. Jesus. Christ, scratching at the wall. Anywho, so we didn't have a topic, so I brainstormed one this morning because uh, we both are fitness buffs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I work out at home for various reasons that we will cover because today we're talking about lunks or gym bros. Fucking gym rats. Because Bergie goes to the gym. I do. Um, And I I guess I really haven't experienced the worst of the worst. Um, but there are definitely douchebags who work out at my gym. Um, one in particular is a paraplegic. That's what the fuck. Yeah. Are you picturing it? I'm picturing it. So, you know, hey, I, I give the guy props for trying, but he'll come in in his wheelchair and he'll, he'll go to like the, um, fucking one of those cable bench machines or any, any of the machines of the upper body variety that he can use. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. Fuck off! And, and I on. don't, and I don't know if it's like a self-conscious thing, but this dude does half a rep of just the most weight his body can physically handle. And he just lets it all go. So there's this giant smash of weights every 30 seconds or Don't so. Don't they get He's, pissed off about that? I think they're kind of afraid to approach and be like, hey, guy, get back in your wheelchair. And I'm going to call the ACLU something. on your ass. Yeah. And I mean, you know, like I said, I give the guy props for trying. And I understand a lot of people probably wouldn't do the same in his situation. But it's just... The whole my whole my whole thought process behind people who go to the gym and just make fools of themselves is that you're just uneducated. You, you're gonna hurt yourself doing it the way you're doing, um, like this CrossFit stuff. Oh fuck! I don't I don't go to a CrossFit gym, but there are definitely people who try to do CrossFit activities at my gym, and it's just not the place to do it. And they're the screamers and the hollerers, and it's just they they. The dudes just, that are kipping every fucking pull-up yeah. they do. And it's just flailing their body about in ways that just looks unnatural. And if it looks unnatural, it probably is, and you're going to hurt yourself. Um, so, I mean, that's 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 really the biggest weirdo I've had to deal with. Of course, there's other guys who, uh, you know, I try to go about six days a week, and mm -hmm. I, I'm there for about two hours. I was doing two a days, once before, once after work, but I just, I can't get to the gym that often so i just stretch my workouts and uh there are guys who i have seen five or six days in a row just straight on the bench that's all they do they just sit there on the bench for an hour at a time and do their an hour and uh, it's unbelievable like that's the only muscle group they know how to work and it's just again it's just that uneducated thing are they are they curled in Oh yeah, oh yeah. They look like little sasquatches. What? Well, the I can't fuck? say little, but it's a good way to blow your shoulder out. Yeah, their knuckles are all forward, shoulders out, elbows out. But you know, hey, look, hey, at least they're fucking working out, I guess. Yeah, but um, yeah. There, there is a a video on YouTube. I can't remember the, the name of it, but it's uh, it is. I was telling you about it this morning. It's spot on for like those stereotypical douches at the gym um somebody you said was doing like a national geographic yeah mock. it's it's like a in their natural environment gym 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 bros in their natural environment or something like that and it's like this kind of bbc nature channel knocking off of them narrating about these people who are at the gym and this big beastie guy who's over in the corner doing the crossfit shit and i'm like why is he even here who is he trying to impress and he's just sitting over there in the corner screaming at himself and uh it does a short little snippet of the uh 
the unnatural beauties who are brave enough to venture into the free weight section are scared off by the man who's doing his mating call. And it's a guy on, like, the incline barbell press just fucking twerking because he's trying so hard. And it's 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 really funny. I, th- I thought it was spot on for stereotyping those those specific people. Well, it's so bad that, like, Planet Fitness's whole ad campaign is no lunks. This is a lunk-free zone. Oh, they put fucking alarms in some of their gyms for, gr- like, grunting alarms. Have you heard that shit? No. Like, oh, yeah. I don't I don't know if it's... I don't know what, what franchise it is, but a franchise out there has fucking alarms that will sound if you grunt too loud. So it detects, I like, the volume of the decibels, yes. and if it's too much... And if it's, it's too just... much, it just goes... Meh, meh, meh. It gives this little audible sound of... That's awesome. Hey, don't grunt, please. You're scaring away our other gym guests. It's it's unbelievable. I, Dumbass alert! Don't get me wrong. I don't grunt or anything, but I don't I don't see how that would. Let's make an alarm that's super loud to let you know that you're being a little too loud. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. It's all part of the shame tactics. It is, yeah. I know all this shit. Uh, like the people that come to the gym and hog the machines, and they mm. sit there. And they will not fucking get up. And when they finally do get up, they don't towel their shit off. Right. Oh, dude, that's like a berlit. And it's weird. I do that every machine. Ev- everything I use, I fucking wipe off. Uh, with the exception of some dumbbells. Just because whatever. But it's it's the the looks I get. I look like I, oh, that guy must have a disease. Because he always wipes his shit off after he's done. No, dude, it's, it's courtesy. I, I want you to do that shit so I don't have to lay in your fucking sweaty and ass nastiness. But it's it's just crazy. I don't I don't understand why people don't just take that as a normal thing to do. Fucking clean up after yourself. It just boggles my mind. But I, I, yeah, I get I get looked at like I'm a weirdo. But then again, you know, I I listen to uh, Pandora Comedy Central like radio, like so uh, Louis C K and Tosh Point oh, Yeah, I listen to all that shit, so I giggle a lot when I work out. And I think people think I'm weird just because for that reason too. That's a dangerous listening choice because you but might it, laugh in the middle of a heavy set and then comes uh, back down yeah, to hurt you it's almost happened but I, i've listened to, to tell you the truth i've listened to it so much that i can i've heard just about everything um i mean there's probably six or seven steady comics who just keep coming on just because i repeatedly like their stuff john segura is a good guy you heard of his stuff he's fucking funny as hell but uh, he's the one. He's the one I recently discovered about a year ago. But yeah, that's I don't know. It's just wait. Is it John? I think it's Tom. Tom Segura. Tom. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I don't know. That 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 totally distracts me from like the the discomfort. The you know I don't like doing this, and it that that gets me kind of pumped up, I guess, to to lift. But I mean, I mean, music works. But for it some does. reason, that works better for me. I don't. I don't know why. It just keeps me totally in a new world, and I don't have to worry about what's going on around me or, or any of that stuff. And it's that's my thing. I don't know why. Whereas I, for obvious reasons, because I can't go to the gym and I don't have gym money, I built one in my basement mm-hmm. when I bought my house. I mean, I had a workout room at my old apartment that I could go to, but you know, once you got kids. Unless you're going to pay for the child care portion of going to a gym. And then you got some idiot watching your kid Mm -hmm. who, if there's a problem, are going to come interrupt you on the fucking floor. Nah, fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. I work out strictly at home with the exception of biking and jogging. I don't have to wear headphones. I can crank the music Mm -hmm. as loud as I want in the mornings when they're not here. When they are here, I kind of have to keep it uh, like morning show radio. Because I do most of mine in the morning. I don't grunt, but there's times when I just get through some. I'm like, "Fuck you!" You just gotta oh, throw that down. It sure. feels nice, but that... I don't have to worry about wiping my shit down. Yeah, I don't have to worry about making stupid faces. I can fart to my heart's content. Oh yeah, I can pick any song I want. Normally, I go EDM. Yes, that that's another good one if because it, it, you can get in a rhythm with the beat. Usually, EDM is my uh, cardio music. Uh, and then, you know, if I have to stop to poop real quick, uh-huh. I can just go poop mm. and then get right back to it without worrying about somebody being on the station I was on or uh, just having to walk all the way to the locker room, all the way back. Right. And that that's my thing is the gym I work out at is upstairs from the locker room. Like the locker room, gym, pool, all that kind of stuff is downstairs. Mm-hmm. But all the weights, everything, 
is upstairs. So if you have to poop, you got to go downstairs. Oh. And then you got to go in the locker room. And it's just, I'm already at the gym. Why do I got to do two floors of stairs? Doesn't make sense. But, yeah, no, pooping is definitely it's definitely a problem. Especially when you're at the gym for two hours every every workout. I have to poop pretty much every time I'm there. Two just fucking hours, out. though. Yeah, man. Oh, good for you. Jesus Christ. Yep. Um, typically, uh, it's like two muscle groups. I'll do like an upper body and then cardio and then the lower body. So I don't do like the contradicting or opposite muscle groups. It's just straight biceps and then cardio and then I'll do like calves. So not an arm like day that. of buys and tries mm-hmm. and shoulders no. a little? No, it's just, I mean, if you go six days a week-ish, you can get your entire body workout every week. So, I mean, uh, I, I had a good buddy who uh, recently ended a very long-term relationship uh, with his high school sweetheart. And it was it's one of those things where, you know, he had the future all planned out and she had other ideas. Like, you mean taking other dicks? Uh, I don't know if that was the case. I kind of really haven't talked to her, but... Uh, he doesn't seem to think so, but it was just a, like a, hey, I think our futures are headed in opposite directions. And it was probably more along the lines of I would like to take some other dicks, but who fucking knows. But this kid, um, he's at like 160 straight days. I don't know if he's taking a day off. But of going to the gym? Of going to the, And this kid is just like at an unhealthy percent amount or per body fat percentage. Like he's probably hovering around four or five this now they say anything dressed. under five you start to have Stacked. some some health issues like there's such a thing as skinny diabetes mm-hmm. oh yeah for sure or uh you can develop osteoporosis from it mm-hmm. shit i wish i was at like five or six percent that'd oh be awesome God. right but but just the, I like the lifestyle this guy yeah me too that's my weakness man is food fuck food is so good but this guy will that's where i got that uh kind of my workout routine in is he'll do the whole two a days but just strictly focus on one muscle group while he's at the gym both and times then, yep so he'll do not not the same muscle group both oh, times okay. but once before once after work he'll work two different muscle groups but just two and then he'll do a cardio session on one or the other and it's it's and it's uh definitely improves my uh my physique trying to kind of copy what he's doing and then another thing that he pointed out i was kind of doing wrong is my for, uh, this this was always something I thought was right too is as soon as my feet hit the floor from waking up in the morning I'm shoving my face like I will eat a banana or fucking start cooking some eggs before I even take my morning pee like that is how important food is to me in the morning it was just weird it was just my mm. thing like it's, as soon as I got out of bed I'm like I'm fucking hungry I'm gonna go get some food and he was like dude just have a cup of coffee in the morning and go to the gym and that's what I've been doing and it's I don't know I don't know specifically why the science like i'm not into the whole why your body does exactly certain things but it's well, like the so just the start in your metabolism kind of thing in the morning where i always thought eating something was good working out like while you're on a liquid or fast like fasting for that eight hours of sleep plus the hour at the gym or whatever i guess that just amplifies the amount of calories you burn or I don't fucking know. He tried to explain it to me. I'm like, I don't care. As long as it shows me results, fucking throw it in me, right? I can get a healthy dose of meth before I go to the gym and I'll be fucking fine. Yeah, I'm sure you will for like six days straight. six fucking days. The thing about that, and I've read a lot about this, is if you eat a little something, Mm -hmm. just light, just enough to get something in your stomach so that your body is processing in new energy and calories while you're burning off your glycogen stores because your blood sugar is the lowest in the morning right when you wake up because you've been eating all night. So then you go to town with cardio and also lifting, so you burn all your glycogen stores, you get to fat burning faster. And if you have a little something, then you don't feel so zapped afterwards, and then you eat a little something-something at the end with your shake. So what I do is get up, piss, crack my back, stretch, eat, go to town. Like religiously, that's my routine. Right. Yeah, yeah, and that's the other, the other thing is I would always consume some sort of pre workout before the gym, and then water through my entire workout, mm-hmm. and then my protein shake when I was done. And he said, "Dear, go immediately from your pre workout to your protein shake. Just sip on your protein shake while you're working out." And he's in, he's, he's consuming like a hundred hundred grams of protein a day or something. I think fifty. 
50 in each one of the shakes. So that's just 100 grams of, like, powdered protein a day. And uh, that's what he's consuming. And I'm just like, holy shit, man. I, I don't think I could ever utilize 100 grams, 100 of, grams protein. of protein a day. <clears throat> well, now let's let's back up here to, and we discussed that you're in the military and mm-hmm. you have been deployed. Now, when you were deployed, they had an awesome gym there. And I remember you emailing me yeah. about that and yeah. sending me some pictures of shit. And I saw them on your Facebook. So you said a lot of the guys over there were going uh, supplement crazy. Dude, and, and it's, it's weird because the stuff you can get in a roundabout way through like the interpreters or Tajimans as we called them is uh they could get you some like borderline illegal stuff i never tried any of the stuff but a couple of the guys did um one in particular was this little tiny scrawny guy and uh he put on probably 40 pounds while we were over there jesus christ it was crazy man i mean he's back down to his normal little well, what's the point of doing 60 that 60 pound weight but that he just wanted to get big and slay the pussy when he got home and you know all that stuff which i'm sure he did but whoa coming in hot you, you stop you stop doing it and you're just gonna fall back to your normal routine and normal size but that's why you gotta go natural yeah go natural man but uh i remember you telling me about well mainly how the guys were trying to get huge to come home and get tons of sniz yep oh, so yeah. they were using stuff like hgh yep and I remember you telling me you tried a little bit of that out, and it helped you bulk up a little bit, but not, like, massive. Right. Yep. And it was, uh, I don't remember what it was, but it was, I ordered it off of a workout website. I don't know whether it was, uh, like, bodybuilding.com or, I'm pretty sure that's maybe where it was, because that's really the only place I remember ordering offline from. But I did, I got it off of, you know, just shipped to me, and. It's like a 30-day cycle of that and something else, and then you rotate. And I think I only did maybe two months of it, but it was uh, two months worth. So three months worth of, of it because it was a month on, month off, month on, something, something weird like that. But, yeah, no, it definitely helped me put on some weight. But, again, as soon as I stopped, and it was just a like a fucking deflating balloon. It just disappeared. It pumped you up, and yeah. then once you stopped doing it, which is a lot like what uh, Mark McGuire and shit was doing, those guys with creatine around the time that they were right. breaking the home run records. Yep. It just it makes you retain water, and it kind of makes you look puffy, but it's not actual strength right. as if you were to, over the years, build up. Build, yeah. Solid. Solid muscle. Let's go back to CrossFit. Cross. And how fucking dumb it seems. All the crazy shit... Lifting ginormous amounts of weight. And just and once, too. Just, like, flailing it over your head. I, I, holy shit. I wonder what the... Since CrossFit has caught on in the last three years, I figure. More than, not five, but more like three. I wonder what the uh, frequency is now more of strains mm-hmm. from just flinging the weight around and also of people having prolapsed anuses from right. having uh, blowouts. I'm sure it's pretty common. People trying to, like, super squat way too much weight I'm gonna do it one time it's gonna be fucking awesome and uh, now I can't poop yeah I fucking my insides are my outsides now well there's a I remember you also showed me a YouTube video of two guys that were doing their impression of CrossFit yes and they were just grabbing random objects and lifting them above their head and grunting and then slamming them down down on the ground grabbing another something and 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 like you said the whole kipping doing their kipping pull ups just kicking kicking while they're hanging from a pull up bar and I mean, hey, dude, like I like I said with the whole weird ch- wheelchair guy, hey, if that's your thing, fuck, dude, go for it. But I am going to kind of laugh at you while you do it. That's okay. Um, if you don't know what kipping means the way we're describing it, kipping is say you're doing a pull-up and you're pulling yourself up and you're swinging your legs to propel your body up and you're taking, like, all of the actual exercise out of the equation. Yeah, you're flinging a, yourself. It's a good, you know, this builds momentum, so you're, you're getting rid of about 80% of what you're lifting up above the bar. So, I mean, it's it's kind of a way of cheating, but you're just getting the reps down. So you might as well just go to a fucking cable pull-down machine and just start fucking pulling down 30, 40 pounds because that's really what you're, what you're doing. You should be having your feet, like, usually behind you with your feet crossed over each other mm-hmm. is a good position to get them in. Or uh, if your knees are, like, if you're mimicking a sitting position while you're pulling yourself up, that's good to brace your core. Got a lot of people probably like this isn't funny. This is uh, kind of technical, and that let's let's get to this now. I have heard some horror stories about uh, nudity at the gym. 
You know, oh, dude. People that walk around naked for way too long. Old men that brush their teeth at the sink with just a shirt and their fucking dick and balls hanging out. Dude, nothing no, on the bottom. No shirt, man. Just dick and balls fucking blow drying their hair in the mirror. What the fuck? Let me tell you. Ho, ho, ho. I got a good one for you. So I am, uh, I believe I was leaving. This was a few years ago. I was leaving the gym and I had showered. I was kind of getting dressed. I was sitting down on the bench. And I was putting my shoes on, and this old gentleman came in from outside, and he was getting his gym attire on, and he got down to his old man tidy whities Oh, right? God. And he does this move that most little children do. He kind of wiggles them down to about his ankles, and he takes one foot out and kicks them up in an attempt to grab them in midair, mm -hmm. and in doing so ended up just swatting them down making them land next to me on the bench. Uh-oh. And there was a giant fucking poop stain right in the crotch of these fucking oh. tidy whities man. And I cringed and did probably a little weird noise, and he just apologized and grabbed them and threw them in his locker nonchalantly and finished getting dressed. But what in your right mind thinks that that's okay to do? In a grown man's locker room is fucking do the little flicky game. No, it's fucking weird. Don't do that. Did Especially go, when you poop you poop yourself. Did he go commando when he worked out? Oh, he I don't I don't remember. After after that I pretty much just uh put my shoes on as fast as I could and left. I don't uh recall the rest of him getting dressed, but it's just one of those things that you know, I not that I am any at all ashamed of myself. I'll fucking get in the nude and whatever but I don't Giggity. I don't just kind of stand around and it's and it's always the old guys who just shouldn't be there who are the ones just standing around naked and they just have conversations with themselves or with I guess with each other they about, just want someone to see them naked. Yeah, that's nobody about asked to it. see them naked anymore. Right. So now they're gonna force somebody to see them naked. You everyone. don't want to see my wrinkly balls and my liver spotted back and anus. Right. So now you're going to have to. Yep. And when you turn around, I'm gonna be bent over so that you can see my butthole itself. Mm. I haven't had uh, that encounter yet, but I mean, pretty close. Blow drying. You said hair. Blow drying their hair. There are two blow dryers in my bathroom at the gym, and. Uh, they are frequently being used by naked men who are standing there and nothing below drying their hair. I have heard stories from an old co-worker from Menards years ago of a guy that would just routinely blow dry his pubes. Oh, Big I believe it. Big fluffy mound of oh. blonde pubes. He was yep. a Scandinavian guy, and he would just blow dry just, <laughs> just for like five minutes. Mm, I, I don't know if it. he was trying to get it warm so that everything stretches out and looks Kinda, bigger. Right. Or what the fuck? Huh. Blow drying your pubes. Your First pubes. off, who has pubes like that anymore in oh, this day and age? Oh, go to a go to a gym. Hey, I'll get buddy passes. I'll bring you to uh, my gym, and I will show you some pubes. I don't think I want to go with you to the gym just so men. we can look at other people's <laughs> junk. That's called all voyeurism. The, all and these old men have pubes. All these men who are standing around naked and shouldn't be have ginormous amounts of pubic hair. I'm on a guest pass, but hey, Charlie, you could use a shave. Hey. <laughs> I can't see your dick or your balls, I but I can it. assume they're there. It's like a little robin's egg in a yeah, nest. it is. And it's Oof. not even cold in here. Mm -mm. Wow. You just got out of the sauna, too. What your the poor life. Fuck is wrong? Your poor life. Yeah, that's that's another thing, I guess, that I... It's just it's something that I've just kind of toned out now. I just don't really even realize what's going on but it was a shocker i mean going to the gym your first few months i guess and seeing that is a little little strange it's a little weird um that's just something that's not really in the norm these days you know back in the day when it was go to the public pool and change and whatever i guess it was kind of normal to see other grown adults naked but not too many people you didn't realize how many were looking at you at the time Right. People could go there like perverts and just sit yeah. there and pay three bucks to go to the pool. And, just and they don't even there. really get wet. They just put on their swimsuit and they go shower in the pre soak thing. And then yeah. they come back and watch little boys change their and trunks. Just, sit just there see dicks on the all bench. day long. Yeah. Just a sea of little penises. Little wieners. Little sausages. So, sticking with the Jim Lunk theme, mm -hmm. I have been to Lifetime a few instances. 
And when I was there with my friends, they were showing me some pointers on a routine that they had or some stuff that they did to, you know, build their chest up and shit. And the guys around the squat rack, they were always just standing around like, looking at the weight other people are doing. You could tell there's a lot of gym intimidation going on. Mm -hmm. But you can spot a gym lunk by if they're wearing an old affliction t-shirt when they're on the bench. Yeah, that's a pretty accurate statement. Or if they're wearing monster energy drink wear. Yep. Another how, pretty accurate statement. How many GNC brand themed free t shirts do they have to sport around to show that they buy supplements? Yeah, it's pretty much just there's they usually travel in packs, small packs of two or three, and they just sit there and a majority of their workout is talking to each other. That's that's about it. And then they they usually are bigger dudes, but like you were kind of mentioning earlier with the creatine and the and the water absorption and retention, that's that's all you're fucking doing. And these are the guys who will routinely sit on that bench that I was kind of mentioning earlier and just be naked, be fucking no, 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 on the benches, oh. on, the, on the, the benches upstairs where all the all the weights are. They'll sit on the the barbell bench and just sit there, you know, lift weights every once in a while. But yeah, they'll spend. A majority of their time there, and it's multiple days a week. They're just hanging out. Just it's like cheers to them. Yeah. They're the Norm Petersons of the gym. You can spot them coming in as they're wearing their white-rimmed Oakley sunglasses and backwards hats, yeah. and they're high-fiving way too much. And I swear to God, like this whole hanging out, being gym bros thing, it sounds like foreplay. They're, they are one foot out of the closet Hoping that somebody else is like, yeah, we, you know, we should try this other place that I know of. And the next thing you know, it's just, just hammering butts. D's and B's. Dicks to buttholes. How you fellas doing? Yeah, yeah I, it was pretty funny the other day. I was sitting there getting ready to go upstairs, getting ready to go work out. And I heard a couple of guys who were leaving talking about where they were going to go out to eat. And these are these kind of gym bro guys. And. Oh, they were talking about Chipotle, and then they were talking about Boston's, and they were talking about all these places, and I'm just thinking, if if you come here often, and you are, are excited about working out, then you should... Probably not go to Chipotle. A, right. That was a good workout. I'm going to go slam down 3,500 calories down. Yeah. in one burrito. <laughs> yep. Then I'm going to drink guacamole until my eyes bleed. Yeah. And that, that's a, that's, that is a hard part, man. I love food. Like I said earlier, I fucking have a super weakness for food, but... I don't know. You're gonna spend two hours at the gym. You might as well just eat healthy when you get done. Right. Just waste all your today at work alone. I was given a free donut, but I split it with someone. I was given three free cookies. Oh. I only ate two. I gave the last one away, and it was just like food, 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 food. Where we work, there's always a lot of there's food. There's always food, and it's just the shittiest food, too. Just I mean, I can't say shittiest, but like as far as like. <laughs> Pizza sugary and Chinese fucking food, fatty yeah, donuts greasy food ice that's cream. what it is it's delicious it is but it's the worst kind of food you could eat if I want to rub it all over my food. body yeah oh yeah I'll bathe in it just fucking pizza on my fucking dick as long it. as it's not like hot fucking throw it in me yeah it can go like 10-15 seconds in the microwave maybe just to get it a little warm no I lukewarm I, I need it I need it warm I want to unstuff that crust oh yeah I'm gonna devastate it marinara and mozzarella all over my balls it's odd that i'm picturing now you rubbing marinara all yeah. over your balls thank you for that if i told you it's happened before why would you why oh i don't know my wife's into food too oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, giggity but uh yeah no i mean it's going to the gym is definitely i mean i i find it as rewarding because uh I, I do see results, and, and it's one of those things where I do take it pretty seriously and, and want to see results, and then keep going, too. Like, I don't I don't uh, see any plateaus. I really haven't in the last year or so. It's just been a constant. You know, that that's a, a lot a turn off for a lot of people who go to the gym is they'll hit this plateau after they've lost, you know, their desired amount of weight, and they just can't lose more. And it's a lot of fucking work, and it's... Just requires constant attention, but that's why I tell people that say they want to lose weight. I want to lose this many pounds. I'm like, stop focusing on the number. Right. Maybe focus on like a couple of pant sizes or a number of inches, Mm -hmm. and just get going and don't keep track. Write down your starting weight, and then like a month or two later, you're like, holy shit, look at me. Yep. And then weigh yourself. Don't fucking sit there every morning and get on the scale like, oh, I can't do it. I can't lose the weight. I'm so bummed. And it's yeah, it's a constant, constant effort to. 
but uh, the the other the other nice thing it's it sounds it sounds weird but I kind of I kind of peacock a little bit you know what that is have you heard that expression before you're looking around or you kind of walk around and kind of flex a little bit oh so, you're peacocking peacocking yeah so I do that like at my gym there are mirrors everywhere I know like, because you, you take pictures of yourself and yeah I do internet. swelfies I do swelfies I'm not ashamed. <laughs> But there, it's it's just one of those things where I can, it sounds just cocky and ignorant as hell, but I can see my improvements like as I'm doing them. You know what I mean? It's like a, I can see that that muscle group is working. I can see that I have a decent form or I look good doing it. I guess, and it just makes me feel better and try that much harder. So, it's I don't know, kind of seems cocky, I guess, but I think it helps and it works and. It does. Seeing I had mirrors in the things. workout room at the yeah, apartment for oh. sure, and, and you know it's not that it's not that that is the reason they're there, but it's one of those things where you can watch yourself do it, so you know you're doing it right. So, yeah, I feel the works. same way about mirrors in bedrooms. Oh yeah, on the ceiling. I never had one on the ceiling. No. You know what's weird about mirrors? So, this is just completely sidetracked. So when I was in Afghanistan, I had my father stay at my house. And uh, he's ah, a yes. he's a handyman. He's a, he's a he's a handyman. He did he did some stuff around the house for me. And he just email me a list every once in a while and just say, "Hey, would you like me to do this and this and this?" And I'd say, "Yeah, no, whatever. Don't worry about it." And one day he uh, in his handyman work, he he was employed with a buddy of his who they would uh, kind of tear out um, various restaurants, hotels. Um, all sorts of just random shit. So he would get like free things all the time, bar stools, um, fucking bar ends, bar cat, all that shit. And uh, he 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 t- he uh, emailed me one day and said, "Hey, do you want a hot tub?" And I'm like, "Well, fuck if you can get it for free, I, I guess." That was this fucking random hot tub at this place. And he said, "Okay, well, my mother who." They were they were separated. Obviously, my my mother came over to the house one day to take the dog for some something, and uh, noticed that there was a hot tub halfway down my basement stairs, and she immediately emailed me and said, "What's going on? Why is there a hot tub in your house?" And I thought, "Well, that's kind of fucking weird because I didn't say I wanted it in the house. Usually, you keep a hot tub outside, but uh, whatever." So I emailed my dad back, and he had this elaborate plan of putting that downstairs along with a bunch of the mirrors that he had pulled out of a Perkins, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was going to put the mirrors around the wall in my basement in the hot tub right in the middle. And I don't know. It must have just been his idea of me just shooting porns when I get home or something because I don't understand why I would need mirrors on every single wall of my basement and a hot tub in the middle. But, yeah, that was just a... Why? Why? Mirrors he thought he was and... going to turn your basement into a pussy palace. That's pretty much what he thought. Yeah, I guess he he thought I was going to be slaying the tang when I got home, but I did. But you were in a committed relationship. Well, I was. Yeah. So. Yeah. Weird. Kind I don't of. Know. Yeah, I, did, I guess <laughs> just one. Yeah. <laughs> Slayed a tang. It's all about uh, quality, not quantity. That's true. Very true. Unless you're ugly, and then you should probably get as much quantity as possible, just so that you can compensate. Right. Yeah. Like fat girls. Like really fat girls. Try to fuck all the time. She ain't a lady unless she's 280. That sounds like something someone would say in Wisconsin. Yeah. With cheese in their mouth. Have I explained to you my concept of Wisconsin pretty? No, I don't think so. You've never heard me say that? Mm -mm. I might see a girl and I go, and most people wouldn't be too impressed with her. You know what? She's Wisconsin pretty. Like a five or a six? or Every girl in Wisconsin that comes here gets a true rating. Sure. But say you got a girl from here that's like a five in Wisconsin, she'd be a seven, maybe even an eight. And whatever your your rating is here, add two or three points in Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Because they got a lot of fatties. Sure. And a lot of women that look like people's uncles. Yeah. It's weird. That's true. And you know what that makes me think of for no good reason? It's time to play the RPS Intercontinental Championship Challenge. Perfect. I'm I, ready. I have to do the introduction. Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Blumpkin and Friends brings to you the RPS Intercontinental Championship Challenge of the World, where you 
play rock, paper, scissors against the champion. You throw five hands, winner take all. So today we have Bergie taking on the champion, Graham of It Radio. Mecca like a high, Mecca. Fuck, fuck, fuck! Are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? Uh, yes, I am. You better do uh, better than Neil did, because okay. Neil fucking... Jesus, he shit the bed. He he could have had the win, but he so got how many, how many rounds has Graham undefeated? Well, this is his second or third. You might be his third or fourth title okay. defense. Okay. So here we let me make my chart. One, two, three, four, five. Hand number one. Hmm. So I am going to think about this a little bit. Um, and I am going to check what he texted me to make sure that I got this down. Okay. So in the uh, classic first round, I'm going to assume that he's going to think I'm throwing a rock. So he's going to throw that paper for the win. I'm going to throw the scissors to take his paper away. Well, he also threw a scissor, so that's a tie. Son of a gun. Hand number two. Let's go with scissors again, just because I'm ballsy. Graham threw a rock. Oh, son of a bitch. Point to Graham. So, hand number three. I'm going to do a scissors again. Ah, good for you. He threw a paper. Point to you. Perfect. There we go. Hand number four. Um, let's do a rock this time. Oh, he threw a paper. Son of a bitch. This guy's good. He is fucking good. I mean, it was his concept from his old show that I appropriated so that I could use it on my show because it's gimmicky and fun. Hand number five. So he's up one right now, right? He is up one. You can hope so to tie it. I could hope to tie it. Let's just go ahead and um, throw... Let's do another scissors since that treated me pretty good. He also threw a scissor. Damn it. Graham of It God. Radio wins again. God damn, he is way better at this than I thought he was going to yeah, be. Yeah, that's... He used to have other people play, and he almost never played, and now I'm forcing him to have to play because he... Number one fan, Tim, was the initial champion. We did it on an episode. Uh, I think it was episode number two of the show. And uh, it got to the point where I was playing him to decide. I was bad. He, no. you know, we did best two out of three. I forgot it was out of five. He beat me like two in a row. I'm like, fuck! Right? So Tim was the champion. Here's the thing. I didn't announce what we were throwing. I just announced that he had beat me in that hand. Oh, so I sure. fucked it up and I cut it out of the show. So that the next time we did the official on-air debut of it, where Tim had to text me his hands, and then Graham did it live, and then it came to a tiebreaker, which I threw for Tim. I have not won a single hand throw. <laughs> I lost it for Tim, and Graham took the title, and he just keeps on winning. Well, won't give up. So uh, this has given me an idea that I want to have another bit on the show that I'm going to debut in the next episode. It is going to be called Guess Who Karaoke Roulette. Oh. Five clues to guess who the secret person is. If you guess it, I have to sing a crappy pop song. If you don't get it, you have to sing a crappy pop song. Mm. So there will be people who are like, oh, that sounds hilarious, but I don't want to do it. Right. Oh, that'd be, I'd be so bad at that. <laughs> you don't have to be good. It's just you have to try hard. It gives you incentive to not right. have to fucking yeah. sing. I'm fine it's singing, so I'm like, this is awesome sure for me. Is. I can totally flex my vocal chops and show off and pick songs like Ace of Bass or Madonna or George Michael. I see. I would probably need like a, a refresh. I would need to look that any of those songs up if well, I was going to sing them. I would have the song pop songs I'm to give you like a refresher. Justin Bieber's. No, Bieber's. I, don't, I don't want the Biebs. No, no Biebs, please. No, Biebs. no, I don't think that's going to well, work. Justin Timberlake. I like him. Cry me a river. Fucking cry. Oh, that's a good song. Yep. See, see. Oh. Now you're. I peek. You're so gay cry for me, Justin me, Timberlake. God, I would fucking throw my balls in his asshole any day. It's odd that you would... Normally, if you have a hard man crush on another dude, it tends to be you want to be dominated by the dude. But that's weird to be like, oh, I would fuck his little butt I so hard. I would fuck his little butthole. And he's... he's what's what's his wife's name? Uh, Jessica Beale. Jessica Beale, yeah. Dude. Super jelly for that guy. Would you suck his dick just to get a chance to taste her pussy yep. after he was done fucking her? For sure. Yeah, I have it on record now. It's yep. on the air that yep. you just admitted. Yep. If they're sitting right here, hey. In my basement. Give me that, yeah. If somehow I get Timberlake and mm -hmm. Jessica B. Seventh Heaven herself in my basement. They're yep. going to fuck right here next to all the empty buckets of paint and uh, 
furnace filters and then you're like well all right you got done fucking her and you're coated in her juices that thing's going right in my give mouth give me that knob to slob oh, bro billy I'll fucking throw it in me oh jesus well that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of blumpkin and friends i thank you for joining us today you can find the show by interacting with us on twitter there's one twitter for both shows it's at what do we call it i may change that but god running one twitter's boring enough running too would be like fucking annoying <laughs> you can find the show on facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash blumpkin and friends that's blumpkin a-n-d friends not the ampersand from the logo because you cannot put a, a symbol into an internet address it does not work that way mm. so for blumpkin and friends i'm the reverend johnny blumpkin and i am bergie good night and I will show you some pubes. Give me that, yeah. Give me that knob to slob, bro. Jesus. I will fuck his little butthole. Oh, yeah. God, I would fucking throw my balls in his asshole any day. Go ahead. Fucking throw it in me. Little wieners.